Um, now we have um, ethics, religion, and theology lecture, Dr. Diana Bosman, and her title is Students Use Option Generative AI in Exam Assessments, a view from the pages. Hi everyone, can you hear me? Um, it's been I've been here for, for um, the entire morning. And it's been a really interesting morning. I've, I've learned a lot uh, around social media and teaching and learning around uh, storytelling and digital stories and e-portfolios and, and what we've just done with the, um, uh, the trolley. <laughs> Uh, I'm the only one who's here to tell you I'm a specialist in what goes wrong. <laughs> so, so I'm I'm here to share uh, it's a reflective exercise uh, or my own reflection on what went wrong for us. I'm a lecturer in ethics, ethics two and two, uh, moral discourse on human rights and civil society. And my colleague, uh, HIV of our department, Professor Swart, is, is the lecturer for the other ethics module that we taught in the first semester. The same thing happened in both, and the irony that it happened in ethics does not escape us. It felt like we were in a war, a bloody, bloody war in the trenches, and we, we, were, we were those dying. Um, so I'm just going to tell you what happened. Uh, using the model by Rolf et al, um, questions of what happened, so what, and now what? <laughs> this is just my course, uh, that's just a little part of the exam, pay bets about the exam. Uh, the total marks does not matter, the students had to write three short essays, so it could have counted out of 300. We just make it count out of 75, but they don't feel overwhelmed feels like a smaller, smaller assessment for them. Um, the background is that uh, in, in arts and humanities, in the faculty generally, after COVID, we are only following online assessments. Um, you have to apply specifically a right of motivation if you want to have a sit-down assessment. I know that now because I wanted to change everything after June. And um, I set my assessments, especially for Ethics 212, under assignments, not under tests and quizzes, because the students are expected to write paragraphs or short essays, and, um, and the tests and quizzes do not incorporate the turn into plagiarism. So I, was, I thought I was very clever. Uh, an extract of the instructions in the exam at the beginning is your submission will go through Turnitin, so I do warn them. We discuss it in class beforehand as well. Work independently, don't consult anyone. Only use your course reader for answers. So the course reader is a PDF compiled of many different um, articles and chapters from books. Um, and then you may not use anything else. Uh, also not use AI like ChatGPT or any other paraphrasing tool in the exam. Luckily I included that any other paraphrasing tool because that covered me. Um, in terms of marking, there's about 260 students in the module, 238, 240 wrote the final exam, the first exam. And as soon as I started marking, I, I just saw this... Uh, I was just too impressed by my students. Uh, the answers were too good to be true. It's like the first five students, four of the first five students scored over 90% for the exam. Um, and and, then I, and the, they were feeding me on information. So things that I didn't know, I had to Google and I said, oh, it's true, oh, the fact's right. But it didn't come from the course reader. So it also became a warning sign, so really good answers, very impressed, and stuff I didn't know. Um, then I went to turn it in, because with 240 students, you don't check turn it in, it takes so much time, immediately. And then out of that 240 students, 76 students had an AI alert of over 50% uh, AI-generated text. So this is not plagiarized text. 
It's not copy pasting, it's AI generated text. The majority of those 76 students was over 80%, and 19 students were, were said to have a 100% AI generated text. So I wish I was Angela, who spoke a bit earlier, who had these two students who, who's got to be investigated now. I had a quarter of the class. Um, warning signs came up for me. Uh, of course, that I, I was. I was in a mess, uh, not something I could ignore, I had to deal with it. I sent back an SOS email to, to Karu uh, to help me, uh, because last year I had a, a few students where, where this also happened, and she helped me with copy leaks and submitting on behalf of students just to do a test. And we did that now as well, just like three, four students, and the pattern was exactly the same. So the reason why we submitted to copy leaks is, is Turnitin is very good with picking up plagiarism. Copy leaks is better with picking up AI generated texts. So even though copy leaks also flags plagiarism, and that's the first percentage that comes up, uh, actually good because the students are then, then put at ease when they see 10% or 15%, and that's not so big. But then when you go into the report, the AI comes up. Then with, with, uh, with the, the first three or four that Caro helped me to submit, uh, I realized I have to check all of them. So now I had to send an, first an announcement on account to 240 ethics students in their second year, in the middle of their exams, already completely stressed. I'm also 100, 1,000% stressed, and ask them to resubmit these um, uh, exams that they've already written to a new portal. Give them instructions. They've got all these warning lights going off. I'm getting emails, exactly what I didn't want, from tens of students. What's going on? Why do we have to resubmit? And, and am I one of the, the, the same teacher? I haven't even said anything yet, but you know what happens. So, and I was in Helsinki at that time, teaching for a week, so I was marking there and teaching. A, um, and so they resubmitted, I gave them a number of days to resubmit. Then copy leaks results came out. 38 students, 100% AI generated text. 11 students, between 80 and 98%, but closer to 95 to 98. Nine students, between 50 and 75%, so 24% of the class. Emotions ran high. On both sides, uh, you can imagine the emails I received. My husband, he's busy with his PhD in, in AI and higher education. <laughs> Not here. <laughs> Not here. Uh, but he, I mean, he was like standing on the side and he, he said, this is a, a, a show of anxiety. Um, but uh, it's, it was anxiety, anger on my side, disappointment in the students, frustration, shame from the side of the students, students confessing. I got all these confessions. Please don't tell. Please don't go to the prompted. Please. And, and, and then many of them also confusion because why did they have to submit? Why do I cause all of them to submit? Oh. Um, so from <laughs> emails from the innocent, from the guilty <laughs> and from the unintended offenders, which I need to say something about. Uh, uh, out of all of these students who were found to have used AI, whether guilty or guilty by choice or not, I only had one student out of 74 students who persisted that she didn't use AI. All the others accepted which was quite a surprise for me, and, and she didn't. She was just so well prepared that she shared her document, she actually went to you, she shared her, her, um, her, uh, her summaries with me, and she just did an oral, oral with me as well, where, where she clearly really had a good grip on the work. She, um, so students had different reasons why uh, why they wanted a second opportunity, so requests, some pleaded for it, 
um, uh, some just assumed, I just got many emails that said, so when's the second opportunity? And uh, those assumptions oftentimes came from students who, who intentionally used AI, which was quite, which made me even more angry. Um, and they did, they did all get a second opportunity. So, so that's the end of it. But no one wants 240 students writing an exam, and then wants 70 of them rewriting the exam, and you have got all that marking to do again, and I just thought this cannot happen again. Um, we are not alone. Um, I've done some, some readings uh, since then. Um, many people in different universities across the globe are struggling with students using AI. I know we have to move to a process where, and that's also where, where JP is doing his research, constructive use of AI in research and higher education. Uh, in our faculty at the moment, I'm on the learning and teaching committee, and our decision at arts is for now, it might not be formalized, but what we've decided in our meetings is that we do not want undergraduate students to use AI, uh, because it's still a, a, a phase in their development, academic development, where they have to develop their own critical thought processes and skills of thinking. So for us, in a sense, it's easy for the first and the second years because it's just the don't go there. And then we start incorporating it and try to, to um, learn, teach students how to, to work with it in a, in a different way. Um, and, and now my question is, now what? What's the best way forward? Initially, I just decided, sit down. Just sit down for undergraduate students. I've tried to start that process now for this this um, upcoming exams, and then I, I actually backed off because it's quite quite a hassle to to have to get that okay. And I was also starting to ask myself because so many students in my course evaluations are really grateful for for the the, um, the online platform and should 100% uh, of students be punished because 24 um, percent uh, did not honor <laughs> honor the instructions. So I'm in a process of rethinking, of reading, researching alternative assessments, um, or, or, or just I thought I was very clear in my communication, and perhaps I wasn't. What I did learn uh, around uh, turn it in and copy leaks is that and and. That's where I say I was covered by paraphrase. Don't use any paraphrasing tools. Um, students who have, a, and many of our students, my laptop does not have that, but of our students have MacBooks, for instance, maybe not as many, but quite a number of students have MacBooks with a built-in grammatical paraphrasing tool. Um, I don't have that, my husband has that. That's how I know about it. And, and the students don't know to switch that off in settings. So those, so the number is a bit torn uh, because with those students, the 100% students whose names were also highlighted. I had a question about why is your name highlighted as AI generated? Why is the module code highlighted? And when I went into that, that's the only deduction I can make. That they had this tool on right from the beginning didn't know to switch it off. Um, so we've got a lot to learn and a lot to to um, yeah to take into account when we assess these AI generated texts. With me, most of the students who were flagged did did uh, use AI. The reasons is I think many of the reasons are or one of the reasons is that that students think if they've got an online open book exam, they don't have to prepare. Um, I think that's the biggest challenge. Yeah. Students underestimate online exams. I always say it's more difficult because you've got this whole load of information to navigate whilst, while you, whilst you've studied the work. You only have the little bit in your head that you can use. And there I also saw the AI generated texts came like halfway or the last few answers, of course they didn't have the time. Suddenly they, they, they weren't prepared to finish it. So um, 
that's just from me. There's a new tool coming up now, Grammarly Authorship. I think it's being released this month or next month. That shows us, and it will also be in the free free Grammarly, that, that apparently it shows you whether someone wrote a text themselves, what part of the text was copy-pasted, what part was AI-generated, when did, we, did the person start writing, or when did the person end. So the whole process of this document that's been developed can be unpacked. So that's maybe something that will help us in the future. But um, I'm just here to share, to share the problems with you and, and uh, what it cost me and also my students and my colleague and to rethink what we are doing when we are having them write exams. And if you see percentages, you don't see the AI. Uh, as Angela also said, you, you see plagiarism percentages. You have to know how to go into Turnitin, how to go into CopyLeaks to access the AI report. Thank you, Norina. Thank you, Charlie.